Hey everyone, we're back for our weekly recap. I am here this week with my coach, Mike Budnick. Thank you for coming up, man. It's awesome to have you. It's great to be here. Great role tonight, man. So, we spent all week working around the guillotine, and rather than to go into some of the specific defenses that we went over, what I want to take some time to do is go over a couple of guillotine options. So I'm going to show like a basic fundamental guillotine that we utilize here at Alpha, and then my coach is going to show me something cool, and I get to learn just as much as you guys do. So, without further ado, let's talk about the guillotine. I like to, when we teach guillotine here, do it from almost a self-defense aspect. From the guard, if I'm looking to do the guillotine, there are a lot of very artificial setups, but the one that I always have to deal with, I have to make sure that I'm taking into account the fact that if I'm doing this for self-defense, he's probably going to be trying to punch me. So I want the capabilities to control the distance and keep myself from being punched in the face. So as I see him make that movement, I'm covering and I'm bringing him down with my legs. This arm is trapping over the top of his head and I'm trapping him in the back of his head. Coach here was one that actually showed me this for the first time several years ago called Stage 1. My head's on this side so it's away from this other punching arm and now I'm relatively safe. I can start to work escapes, attacks, counters, maybe just catch my breath. So one of the things that always happens once we get here is especially with people that, that uh, just want to punch us in the face is they posture back really hard because they're trying to get out. As they posture back, he's giving me the space. I'm going to use that momentum to drive up and bring my armpit over the back of his head. Once his arm hits over, I'm going to lock my tricep down. And now as I come up into position, I've controlled his posture. It's very difficult for him to go ahead and break on out of this control. I've disconnected my guard. I'm keeping my knees tight. And the first thing I want to do is shove my hips away. Seems counterintuitive at first, but if I leave my hips tight, it's very difficult for me to thread my arm. If I'm controlling posture and shove my hips away, now as I bring my arm into play, you can see I have space in here to bring my arm through. So this makes my grab a lot easier. Rather than just circling right around, this is where we short stroke this choke sometime, and I see there's a lot of people falling straight back and squeezing really hard. What I like to do, and again, learn this from coach, is punch this arm deep before I make my move laterally to grab. So I'm driving my hand down almost between my knees, and now I'm going to bring it up on the other side, and you can see it's almost like I'm rocking the baby. I'm taking the arm pit down, and I'm rocking this up. This lets me have a much tighter grip around the neck. This hand's going to come down, focusing on these two major players of fingers for my grab. They're going to get right over this little notch on my own. And that's going to, again, help my grip. So punch, rock the baby. I'm going to get right over that bone. And now, as I go to guillotine, I don't lean straight back. What I do is put pressure on the back of his head, and I draw it to the side. And now I will reconstruct my guard. From here, it's a sideways crunch and my pull to affect my guillotine. And it turns into a very, very effective guillotine choke. So, really nice option for the guillotine, pretty fundamental, but a lot of details that get missed sometimes. And this way, we get to really get a good grip and generate a lot of pressure. This was something I missed for a lot of years until I got to train with you. And we, you put a lot of focus on the squeeze and how you compress the neck. So, getting all those details in there, and hopefully that'll square away your fundamental guillotine. Now, that's not something cool. <laughs> so with the guillotine, Alex used uh, a word in there that is it's vital to any choke in jiu-jitsu. Not just a guillotine, but a rear neck choke, uh, darsh chokes, anacondas, all the chokes. There was a word he used there that it's, it's, it's so, so, so important. People lose it, especially even when you involve uh, lapel chokes. And it's compress. When we choke somebody, we're trying to compress the neck. So many people, when they get their arms around the neck, they get their hand into the lapel, they, they start kind of pulling across the neck, pulling into the neck. What we really want to do is compress the neck. If you, if you imagine an anaconda really squeezing around uh, its prey, there's just compression in every, every angle we can, uh, we can see. If you look at Alex's neck with his chin up like this, there's a very distinct angle, distinct angle from the middle of his uh, throat right here to the, the muscle structure back here. And it's this flat surface right here. That's where it's most vulnerable. That's where I can do the most damage and, and um, I'm going to put him to sleep. So what I'm looking to do, and this again will apply with any choke whatsoever, is trying to match that angle as, as closely as possible and then compress into the carotid artery. So many times when people get this, they set that angle and they start to pull and what happens is, if you come over here, they set this angle where right now, you can, if you see my form, is matching the angle between the front of his neck and his and the side. Sometimes when people start to pull, they'll pull, 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 and they'll end up having their arm go from matching this angle 
to not mention that angle. Um, and if I'm looking for effectiveness, which is, you know, so doing it in a way where I'm going to put them to sleep, I really want to match that angle as close as possible. So what I'm going to do real quick is a, a small little variation of the guillotine where I'm actually struggling to get the, the choke in deep, so I'm going to finish what I call the short guillotine. And basically all we're looking to do is, if I'm in this position, again, sometimes very, very difficult. You don't have to be a black belt in jiu-jitsu to understand that somebody's arm around your neck is a bad thing. If I were to stop the next car that drove past this building, and I say, defend yourself, and I wrap my arm around their neck, they're going to try to stop it. Again, it doesn't take a black belt to understand that an arm around your neck is a bad thing. So, what I'm going to do is, in this position, I'm going to take this piece of my wrist right here, and I'm just going to slide it straight into that carotid, ar carotid artery. And I'm focusing on that angle right here. So, I'm basically matching my wrist up with this angle right here. So, I'm here. I come under and I'm going to match that angle. One of the things you'll notice is my, my wrist is bent a little bit. Once I have that position, I'm going to scoop up my hand and I'm going to try to change this angle to this angle. So I match it, I grab my hand and I'm going to pull it and, and change that angle this way. And that's compressing into the neck. That's the first little compression and it pulls it into the neck nice and tight. The next movement is the, moment, the movement that's going to choke him. So I'm looking to create this angle again. I pull. So this is tight to his neck, and now with this locked in place, when I try to try to pull this up, it's basically going to do this and go straight into his neck. So when I have this position here, and I'll move my sleeve up so it's a little more visible, I come under and I match the neck right here. So I'm just sticking the, the end of my forearm right on his neck, and I'm going to pull the hand nice and tight. Now instead, uh, again, if he's here defending, trying to stop me from getting deep underneath, from this position, all I'm going to do is pull my hand, and then I'm going to compress. I'm taking again. I'm taking this, and I'm compressing this up. Uh, it's something that you can really see when I do just a, a regular lapel choke. If you notice the bend in my wrist, if I hold this tight, I'm not looking to pull this down. I'm looking to compress into the neck. Same thing. I'm taking this bend this way, and I'm compressing it that way into his neck. Same concept with the guillotine. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here, and I'm going to compress up into the neck. Everything else applies. Everything Alex talked about. I'm going to take him, I'm going to try to put him basically on the top of his head. I'm going to keep compressing. I'm going to try to involve my legs, my back muscles. All. Everything else stays exactly the same. Now, one of the beauties to this technique, again, if we're talking about a self-defense situation, is I don't ever want to be underneath somebody. It's, it's a terrible, terrible place to be in. One of the small things he can do to try to escape this is to get up high, to get his hips up high. So if I'm in this position, I wrap up and I match that, I pull this in, I'm, I'm compressing into the neck. As I go back and I start to put his head on the mat, if his hips go up high, without even using my legs, if I just bite my elbow down, he falls straight over and I can follow up on top. So one last time. Again, just a quick finish. We get to the same exact position that Alex was working from. From here, if I'm struggling, uh, obviously, if I can get this in deep, like Alex talked about, deep inside here, forget about it, lights out. Uh, but if I'm struggling for this, instead of trying to get this in deep, I go quick, short, wrist is basically in the carotid artery here. I pull the hand tight, and then the compression goes in. Good. Compression goes in. I start driving down. His head goes to the mat. If he tries to defend, I follow him over. And the finish remains exactly the same from the top. So, talking about the guillotine, everything, everything kind of mimics everything that Alex talked about. The finishing positions are the same. We're still trying to compress the neck. It's a, again, a very, very key word that Alex said when talking about uh, the fundamental, the more traditional guillotine. Um, but if you are struggling to get that arm, arm real, real deep like, we're, like we'd like to, it doesn't mean that the choke's not there. We can still compress the neck. It just takes a, a couple of small adjustments. Awesome. And I can attest to you, I've been caught in that many a time. Uh, that thing is sharp and it, it's on there quick. So anyway, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you helping us out. Guys, check out the rest of our videos. Like, share us around. And we'll be back next week when our topic will be takedown, surprisingly. I'm going to be pulling guard. Someone else is going to be doing takedowns. We'll see you guys then.